and thank you for listening to today's episode of JTCast, the official podcast of the Journal of Athletic Training. I'm your host, Luke Donovan. For the second episode of the month, I will discuss another article from the recent issue of JAT titled, Characteristics of Injuries Occurring During Cross Country, a report from the Athletic Training Practice-Based Research Network by Dr. Ashley Marshall and colleagues from Appalachian State University and A.T. Still University. As a reminder, the article discussed today can be found on the JAT website, natajournals.org, and please remember that all content from JAT is open access to all readers thanks to the funding from the National Athletic Trainers Association. First step, surveying the scene. Running remains one of the most popular physical activities across all ages. Specific to adolescents, nearly 500,000 high school athletes participate in cross-country running annually, making it the fourth and fifth most popular American high school boys and girls sport. Although running is associated with numerous health benefits, running-related injuries are quite common. Retrospective studies have found the overall incidence of muscle skeletal injuries to be 17 per 1,000 athlete exposures among high school cross-country athletes. Girls were shown to have a higher rate of injury when compared to boys, 19.4 versus 15 injuries per 1,000 athlete exposures respectively. Across both collegiate and high school athletics, high school girls cross-country, followed by men's and boys cross-country, had the highest rates of overuse injuries. The time loss of these overuse injuries may be somewhat skewed when compared to acute injuries, as it is not uncommon for individuals with overuse injuries to receive ongoing evaluation and treatment, but to not be removed from training or competition. Despite the available data pertaining to injury frequency among cross-country runners, the treatment characteristics among high school cross-country runners remains unknown. Understanding injury types and treatment characteristics of high school cross-country athletes may provide insight to the needed athletic training services within the secondary school setting. Therefore, the purpose of the study was to capture the injury and treatment characteristics of injuries sustained during cross-country participation by high school athletes. The authors used the Athletic Training Practice-Based Research Network to retrospectively analyze de-identified patient records. Using the network, data was acquired from 104 clinical practice sites across 22 states. Participants were included in the study if they were diagnosed with an injury that occurred during cross-country between the years 2009 and 2019. The authors defined an injury as a condition diagnosed by an athletic trainer at a participating clinical practice site. Injuries were considered time loss if the patient's sport participation was restricted for at least 24 hours, where non-time loss injuries were defined as participation restrictions for less than 24 hours. Patient demographics, injury evaluations, daily treatments, and discharge forms were reviewed for patients who met the inclusion criteria. Here are the results, and let's start with injury demographics. A total of 681 patient cases were recorded over the study period. 415 were girls and 266 were boys. The average age was a little over 15 years. Nearly 70% of injuries were non-time loss and sustained during in-season practice. Approximately 84% of the injuries were the result of either a non-contact or unknown mechanism. Injury to either the knee, ankle, or calf accounted for almost 60% of the injuries, with 43.6% of the injuries being recorded as either a sprain or strain. 18.5% of injuries being recorded as a tendinopathy, and 9.5% of injuries being recorded as general pain. The most common ICD-10 diagnosis were either a sprain or strain to the thigh, hip, or groin, a sprain or strain to the ankle, or categorized as an unspecified distal end thigh sprain or strain. Generally, injured body parts and diagnoses types were similar between girls and boys. Specific to treatment characteristics, a total of 3,621 athletic training services were provided across 2,641 episodes of care. The most common services were therapeutic exercises, application of hot or cold packs, or evaluation or re-evaluation. The least commonly used procedures were upper extremity strapping, contrast bath, and gait training. Individuals with non-time loss injuries accounted for 66% of the provided services. The average amount 
duration, and frequency of care were between seven and eight athletic training services across five and a half episodes of care in over nearly 28 days. When interpreting the results, it appears that high school cross-country student athletes often sustain lower extremity injuries that do not disrupt sport participation, but do contribute to a relatively frequent athletic training services in episodes of care that span over nearly a month. In addition, although most athletic training services were classified as therapeutic exercise, the inclusion of gait training, despite evidence to support the practice among injured runners, was often omitted. Given the length of treatment and exclusion of interventions supported in the literature, the authors suggest that early restriction of participation and inclusion of gait retraining may be beneficial to patient and aid with shortening the overall duration of care. Future studies should continue to uncover barriers as to why certain treatments, such as gait training, are not frequently prescribed, and how other external variables, such as training behavior, contributes to injury frequency and treatment characteristics. In the meantime, the findings of the study can assist athletic trainers with determining appropriate medical coverage specific to high school cross country. Well, that's it for today's JAT cast. Please remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast, which is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Stitcher. You can find out more information about upcoming podcasts and other JAT events on our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts at JAT underscore NATA. Thank you for listening and keep a lookout for next month's JTCast. cast.